Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Charles, and today we'll be talking about why I'm taking a sabbatical from Google. I started working at Google in January of 2015, which means that it's been over six years since I started working there. During that time, I got to work on six different teams and on dozens of projects. And so it made sense at some point to really just take a step back and look at what I was doing and be like, is this what I want to keep doing for the next, you know, 10, 20 years? We know that burnout is a big topic in the tech industry as well. The job of a software engineer is a very creative job. It's one that's very similar to that of an artist or a writer who is constantly working with the more creative side of their brain in order to produce code, designs, writing blog posts, technical write-ups, talks. It, it just takes a lot of energy to do that. And it really is a beautiful career for anyone who's considering pursuing it. It's one where you get to really work with both sides of your brain and be creative if that's where you're leaning towards. But just like any creative job, there comes a time when you feel like the, the fountain has run dry and, and the creative juices aren't really flowing as much. You start to not be as excited about what you're working on or the, the big vision that you used to have that was really driving you. It starts to get a little bit blurry, maybe it gets a little dark and you're, and you're just not as into it. And at that time, that's a good time to really consider uh, taking a sabbatical. Now a question you might be asking yourself is, what the heck is a sabbatical? If you're like me and you're based in the United States, where we have a really workaholic, work-centric culture, the concept of a sabbatical isn't really that common. In fact, because that really gives you time to step outside of your comfort zone and work on something completely new. Really, it gives you the opportunity to be a beginner again. You know, after working on something for seven years, you, you begin to develop a lot of mastery around it and you get very comfortable. You sort of develop these, you begin to develop some habits, uh, expectations, you feel like things are very predictable. The problem is that when you do that, you tend to create blind spots around your skill set. And when we get that comfortable, like you stop wanting to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And really when when you get to that point, that's a really good time to start thinking, okay, let me, let me try something completely different. In fact, there's a, a book that discusses this idea called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. And this is a book that I read uh, a few months ago. I thought it was a very interesting book because it's, it's really about how to promote your work as you're creating it. I work in Google Research. We work on projects that are very moonshotty. Uh, we work on research topics. I mean, I work, mostly work in machine learning and automated machine learning. And the biggest challenge there is, is there's, there's many, of course, there's many challenges, but one of the challenges is, is really promoting your work. And it's difficult to promote your work as soon as it's done. A lot of times you want to be promoting that as you're creating your work, you know, giving talks uh, at various milestones. Because if you have a project that's going to take two years to create, you don't want to present it at year two and uh, find out that no one was actually interested in the problem that you're trying to solve. Now there's a section in this book that's just really dedicated to sabbaticals, and he really says this. The designer, Stefan Sagmeister, swears by the power of the sabbatical. Every seven years, he shuts down his studio and takes a year off. His thinking is that we dedicate the first 25 or so of our lives to learning, the next 40 to work, and the last 15 to retirement. So why not take five years off retirement and use them to break up the work years? He says the sabbatical has turned out to be an invaluable in his work. Quote, Everything that we designed in the seven years following the first sabbatical has its roots in thinking done during that sabbatical. I can't emphasize enough how nice it is to just take your mind off of work for a little bit, just focus on other things that push you outside your comfort zone and give you fresh perspective on the, the work that you were doing previously. Now, a question you might be asking is, what, Charlie, what are you doing on your sabbatical? Well, I got an answer for you. There's a few things that I'm gonna focus on, and a lot of them might make sense, and a lot of them might not make as much sense, unless you really know me. So the first thing is I wanna focus on my health. Now, COVID-19 has been rough on everybody. It's been a very tough time. With lockdown, uh, it's been tough to, to really focus on being healthy. Things that were already difficult, like going to the gym, are now even harder because now you need to sign up ahead of time. Uh, Prices have gone up, things are more expensive in New York City. The 
working out with a mask isn't exactly the most fun thing to do. And it's also been a very cold year. So typically I'd be running, but I, I haven't been able to do that because it's been so cold out and, and I'm kind of a wuss like that. <laughs> so the big problem really boils down to something that is more endemic in our in, in the American culture. And I think uh, the modern day philosopher Naval Ravikant hits on this pretty well, where he says that we, we tend to focus to, we focus first on achieving wealth, then happiness, and then health. When in reality, we should be focusing on doing the inverse. That is, we should be focusing first on our health, then our happiness, and then our wealth. I fall into this trap myself where I've just gotten so focused on work that I'll skip the gym, I'll skip exercising, I'll eat poorly, I've been eating so much seamless, uh, so much delivery with all the oils and fats that <laughs> I've gained the COVID-19. And it, it's really just not been good for my overall health. So long story short is I'm focusing more of my energy on going to the gym. I hired a personal trainer for a few sessions to really just get me on track with things, trying to get back into doing some calisthenic workouts and gymnastics. Uh, I'm also gonna try running now that it's it's getting warmer outside. I mean, it's, it's now May, 2021. So hopefully, hopefully the weather starts getting better. The next thing I wanna focus on is doing more reading. Over the past few months, I've been acquiring this stack of books that I've been working through very, ever so slowly. And, and it was very tough when juggling work and work from home, especially since I was, I was one of those people who was really struggling to disconnect from work where I would just be so focused on this research problem we're working on and on the code that like I just could not disconnect to, to start reading. So now that like I just have a clear mind and, and I have all my free time to myself, I've been doing a lot more reading. I'll make up a, a follow-up video with some uh, summaries and learnings from the books. I'll also try to update my website, uh, charleswild.com, with uh, links to those books and maybe like a, a little blurb about takeaways and maybe even like a score, uh, what I thought about them. But so far, that's been great. The third thing I want to do is focus on a little bit of travel. Um, now I know now is not the best time to be traveling, but I did get a chance to swing by Florida for a little bit to visit some of my friends. Many of my New York City friends have moved down to Miami. Who would have thought? And last but not least, I think one of the big things I want to focus on during my sabbatical is learning how to talk to a camera. <laughs> so basically doing exactly what I'm doing now. Now during COVID, because we were doing, you know, Zoom calls or really in the Google case, we've been doing Google Meet calls. I've had a lot of experience talking to people, um, you know, in, in video conferences. I've given talks over live streams, but the pre-recording videos like this and editing them is like a whole nother dimension. It's something that I really don't feel comfortable doing yet. And it's something that I really want to learn. And I really feel like video is the future of communication online. I mean, one of the beautiful things about it is that it, it's, it's a great way to build a personal brand and it really scales infinitely. Like you can take, I could take this video and upload it to YouTube or upload it to my website and people will be able to find it as long as it's hosted forever. And, and this conversation will be able to be, this message will be able to be carried to countless people uh, across the globe. And I'd like to get more into it. I'd like to start creating uh, YouTube videos <laughs> to maybe be, you know, become a YouTuber, talk about uh, things that interest me like machine learning, uh, research papers, um, maybe even like some entrepreneurship, product building, marketing, really just topics that really excite me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'd love to share them in a video format. So this is really an opportunity for me to step outside my comfort zone and work on on something that isn't coding, that isn't, isn't my day job, the thing that I've been doing for the past seven years. Really just dive right into it and like really try to get good at it. Um, I'm watching tons of YouTube to learn how to do this. I'm doing some still Skillshare classes. I'm, yeah, just trying to learn as much as I can and absorb things to, to push myself outside the comfort zone. In summary, I'm taking a sabbatical from Google for many reasons. You know, some of those reasons are that I'm a little bit burnt out. 
I'm trying to try new things. I'm trying to explore learning about YouTube. I'm like I'm looking to do some more reading, a little bit of travel, and really just focus on my health and improve my overall well-being so that when I do return to, to my regular work life, I'll have a new perspective on things, I'll be energized, and really just ready to hit the ground running and really reinvigorate the fire that, that was keeping me excited about uh, my regular work. Thanks for listening, really appreciate your time. I'm gonna try to post videos weekly from now on, so it'd do me a huge favor if you could just subscribe to this channel and like this video if you got anything out of it. Otherwise, I'll see you in our next video.